What up friends, my intrusive thoughts break my own heart, and today we are going to be taking a look at James Blake's newest album, Friends That Break Your Heart. This is the fifth record from singer-songwriter and producer James Blake. After gaining even more success thanks to the collaborative nature of his previous record, Assume Form, James just continues to hone and explore the ambient and lush soundscapes that he's used to, along with a few more new and exciting collaborations. Though maybe not as memorable as some of his older records like the self-titled and Overgrown, James just continues to do what he does best and just refine what he explored previously even further. The fairy tale like beat on Famous Last Words makes for a great opener, especially when paired with the lush bass and James's more present vocals. The chorus is an interesting low-key moment compared to the verses, although it does give a nice breath of fresh air with how isolated it is. You really get a sense of James's turmoil on this track, especially as his vocal tones fluctuate before we get to that just beautiful bridge. This is true for the lyrics as well, describing the painful process of cutting someone out of your life who you used to be chill with but just became toxic and how it feels like you're just cutting off a limb. There's a bit more of a solid beat on Life Is Not The Same with heavy piano chords and a more metronome-like effect to it. That chorus is just fantastic, and the wailing of the background vocals reach new heights as James passionately explains, I was your champion, I did everything your way. This bittersweet feeling describes his love failing despite him giving it his all perfectly. On coming back, the old-timey effect that's added to James's piano is a pretty interesting sound. It reminds me of something that would be on like a Good, the Bad, and the Queen record or something. James and SZA don't really have chemistry per se because their parts largely feel separate from each other, although they are pretty good on their own. I like how SZA's part has more of an R&B aesthetic to it while James's is more ambient, but the, the transition between these beat switches and different parts of the track just feel kind of forced sometimes. Funeral is sort of akin to his older work, using relative simplicity to highlight his ethereal vocal harmonies. I especially love this on the Don't Give Up On Me lines. It's a spacey pace breaker of a song that just makes you feel full. Frozen is probably one of my favorites on this entire project. Jid was the perfect choice for this song, mixing some grooves with a dark R&B aesthetic along with his very slick rapping style. His flow is fantastic, and when the beat kicks in, like, ooh. That droning synth and sample also make the song feel totally distinct from anything else on the record. Suave also has some great energy on this one, kind of doing a similar rapping aesthetic to Jid, but with more gusto to it that really separates himself from everybody else on the, on the track. James also does a great job in being a sort of soft vocal bridge between the other two features on here, uh, also helping them express how wary they are about being betrayed by somebody close to them. I'm So Bless Your Mind is probably the weakest track on the record overall, thanks to the very repetitive chorus and the largely inconsequential beat. It lacks the beauty that a lot of the songs on this album already established, but it also does not go nearly dark enough to match the energy that Frozen had. The lyrics also are some just pretty basic relationship stuff, and there's not really that many lyrics on this song to begin with. I do really love how wistful Foot Forward is, though, with its light and distant piano and airy vocals. It has somber undertones, explaining how the relationships between people are broken pretty easily, but a sort of hopeful tinge to it, as James is putting his best foot forward and hoping that people who like him for who he is will come eventually. That last chorus especially hits when his vocals are isolated next to that delicate guitar. Show Me is a bit of a mixed bag. The lullaby aesthetic is nice, but I'm almost never a fan of those sort of pitch-shifted sampled vocals. The song sort of stays the same, although I really do like that bridge and second verse by Monica Martin. The synths that come in along with those ethereal vocals are pretty fantastic, although I feel like the track is just a bit too low-key for its own good. I love hearing James explore his deeper vocal tones, and Say What You Will is a great example of that. The lo-fi beat matches his vocal tone quite nicely, evoking a warm feeling, and this also really matches the natural imagery in the lyrics, like 
and I'm okay with the life of a sunflower, and I'm okay with the life of a meteor shower. It's a great backdrop to James sort of learning to love life by loving himself and loving who he is, not even caring about what people have to say about him. Lost Angel Knights does kind of what Show Me was doing, but in a more engaging way thanks to the elegant vocals, harps, and sudden guitar accents that come in here and there. It has a sort of otherworldly nature to it, and I really like how the second verse switches up the instrumentation a bit. The last chorus is really sweet, and I really like the lyrics about sort of blaming yourself for things not going a certain way or for feeling like you missed your chance with someone. They're done in a very poetic and atmospheric way, which I think really fits the track. The title track, Friends That Break Your Heart, really lives up to carrying the album's name. That acoustic guitar has a, such a weight to it, despite it being so simple, and James's passionate vocals really mesh with it in an elegant way. The subtle background vocals and samples are a great backbone to the track without getting in the way of anything, especially considering that the lyrics are probably some of the best on the entire album. It just has a super melancholic vibe to it that sums up the album's themes perfectly. To be honest, I really wish the title track ended the project. If I'm Insecure isn't a bad track per se, but honestly it feels more like a B-side to the record, if anything. It's well composed, and I like the organ lead on the pre-chorus and the grandiose nature of the chorus itself, but it just doesn't really feel like an ending track compared to the title track. The duality between the quiet and louder moments of the song is pretty interesting, however the lyrics also don't really evoke a sense of finality to them. To be honest, I think the track's placement is probably my biggest problem with it. This is just another solid step in James Blake's career, uh, sort of pulling inspiration from his older work while also honing and refining the sound that he explored on Assumed Form. It's pretty consistent sonically, and I really like how raw and open that he's been getting in his lyrics. The fact that he's also putting a lot of emphasis on his vocals is great too. Some experiments don't work out quite as well like on I'm So Blessed You're Mine, and uh, the album can feel like James Blake as usual in some spots, although that's not necessarily a bad thing. The track order also could have used some work, especially near the end, however, this was just a great, passionate, and poignant listen. I'm feeling a strong 7 on James's newest record. Of course, we do have to talk about album covers on this show, and this is a pretty great album cover. It, it balances that sense of natural imagery while also feeling incomplete inside, too, with all the holes in James's body on the cover. Some really lush and vibrant colors as well, which is also kind of weird considering the nature of the instrumentals, although I think that contrast is what makes it kind of good. I wouldn't say it's his best cover, although it does do a really good job at expressing the duality of a lot of themes of the record, and it's just pretty solid. Of course, those are just my thoughts on this newest James Blake record. What did you guys think? Is this kind of the best he's been since his original albums, or did you think he hasn't matched those heights just yet? Let me know, and uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell if you don't want to break my heart, and until the next one, farewell.